you. Yeah, welcome to Reading. I'm glad to be here. Uh, we were trying to work it out. Is this the first time you've ever played this festival? Uh, first time with Pearl Jam. Uh, I've been here backing up Neil Young all one right. time. Right. And, but uh, this is really exciting to all of us, especially probably Stone and I, because we used to read about this back in 82 when we yeah. were collecting rock pictures and things like that. Yeah, so. of course, of course. I mean, it does yeah. have a rich history, which has traveled not just around the UK, but all around the world. And most bands who come here obviously are aware of what's been going on. Yeah. You guys are minutes away from showtime. So, I mean, how do you sort of get prepared? How do you get we are? up? We Apparently what? so. <laughs> Apparently so. Uh, <laughs> I'm in charge. You know, I'm tour managing. You know. What yeah, I heard that. Something about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you got a lot of soloing to do tonight. I mean, how yeah. kind of warm up to you? Uh, well, I've been I've been practicing for the past hour, kind of on and off, and I had a little dinner. Then I work on some scales, and then I just kind of sit around and we joke a little bit. But you know, you look at a set list and you kind of go over our intros and yeah. Just kind of do what, we, what we've been doing for 15 years. Yeah, of course, of course. But, you know, change up the set list every single night. And yeah. it's the obligatory festival question. But you've got, you know, a lot of albums to choose from and a big crowd out there that, that would be happy if you played every single song you had. Yeah. So um, how do you do that? <laughs> well, we, Ed really takes it under consideration what we played at the last festival and what we, what we play uh, every night. So he kind of gears it towards that, what he thinks this festival will, will like. And we'll be doing, like, you know, kind of Jeremy and some of that stuff, some of the older stuff, and a bunch of new songs, and a good mixture, hopefully, yeah. of, that people will enjoy. Is it true that you guys tried out a random setlist generator once, the software that someone had put on a computer? Eddie was telling me about this, apparently, that you guys had tried to get it to do it for you or something. Uh, he's talked about that. I don't know <laughs> if we've ever done that. We had, I had a friend of mine do a, uh, actually, Eddie asked him to do a set list for us, and yeah. it was really good when we played it in Seattle. Yeah, so, yeah, my yeah. friend Chris Adams. That so. must be quite strange being on stage and kind of being, you know, in someone else's control in a weird way, you know. It's uh, it is odd, but it was also refreshing in a way too, because it was a different perspective. So yeah. it, we and our band kind of embraces that kind of stuff. So. Of course, and not just that, but also you know you embrace safety to festival for obvious reasons, yeah. given what you've been through in the past, sure. with Ross Kilda, which was a total tragedy, and now you've erected you know separate barriers out here specifically to ensure that that doesn't happen again. Yes. Um, do you feel that festival security overall has improved, and, and we've learned something from that from that tragedy overall? Do you feel that? Well, I hope since Ross Kilda has happened, there has been some 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 learning and some some uh, caring. And, and, and there's been new, new ways to, to do festivals and to do security, and I think there has. Um, we're, we're certainly very conscious of that and want to always be very conscious of, of safety at festivals. That's the number one priority in our minds. Um, and the, 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 the second barrier out there tonight is, is, is an example of that. So we want to make sure that everyone has the best time they can and the safest time. Of course. Just going back, uh, just rewinding for a second back to something you were talking about at the very start. We started chatting about Reading Festival in particular. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your memories growing up and stuff. Were there particular bands that you that you remember kind of reading about playing here and particular sort of images that you have of this place, considering now you're here as yeah. well? Yeah, well, for sure, Iron Maiden. And that's going to totally date myself right now. But, <laughs> man, I was so stoked to read about Iron Maiden playing Reading Festival. Yeah. Or, you know, any of those new wave of uh, British heavy metal bands, Motorhead, all those, those, those are the ones that Stone and I kind of gravitated to in uh, uh, around high school time, and we were all like, wow, what's all this music coming from England? Yeah. And, it's pretty crazy yeah. when you get up on that side of stage. I don't think you've had a chance to sort of clock the crowd yet. yet, but when you do and you, you realize that that is that, that warehouse that you've seen in pictures, and that yeah. is that tree, and it's that flat field, and it's just iconographic. I can't yeah. wait. It's, it's a total, it's a legendary event. We're yeah. stoked to be part of it. You nervous? You know, I'm not yet. I'm well, like, you wait till that fish kicks in, Mike. Yeah, I think might well, be trouble. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> might have to have a word with Frenchie, the cook. Yeah, well, I think it, hopefully it'll be okay. We'll see. I think we got to go because you're on very soon. So uh, right. it's really good to talk with you again, Mike. You yeah, too. Good Thank luck you. tonight. We well, can't wait for the headline set. Of course, that's coming up exclusive to BBC this evening, and we'll be going to that very soon. Thanks, mate. See you then. Right on. All right. Thank